All right, our animation starts with our plan, our storyboard. These keyframes, these major story moments, which in a best case scenario show something different in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end uh, to showcase a transformation. This is not all the frames of our animation. So this means that our animation is going to be at minimum nine frames, but far more likely the timing will be different because we'll decide to spend a little bit longer showing it drinking, right? So this isn't a comic book. This is an animation where you have lots and lots of sequential panels giving you the illusion of time passing. And the advantage of animating digitally is we're not putting it on film where it gets played through a mechanical device where it only shows each, each uh, image of film for a certain amount of time. We can actually set the timing differently on each frame should we need to. And because we can make perfect copies, I could have one frame that just establishes my character in a setting and the only change in the next frame be that the character blinks, the eyelids close, and then I can repeat the first frame, repeat the blinking frame, repeat the first frame, and I can do that as long as I want, right? Without any extra effort because we can make perfect copies each time. So I don't want this to be that we're, we're drawing and constructing every frame in the animation because we don't have that kind of time. And it doesn't uh, utilize the best advantages of Photoshop for this. But our, our plan is incredibly important. Now, we're going to build two Photoshop files. And the first Photoshop file we need to build, in fact, I'm going to make folders in my assignment 5 folder here. The first Photoshop file is going to be filled with assets. And so I've already started looking for some. Um, I know what some of these assets are because I've already created them. Like the background, the character, but I also have a hand that's reaching out. And so I looked, I did a Google image search. I, I think I'm gonna use this hand here because I like the idea of it being kind of referential to bones, like coming out of the body, pulling the head back on. But I'm gonna need to clean that up, cut it out, make it into an asset, right? Just like we did with compositing. Uh, other assets I might want, I might want to decide to have the sun actually set, right? So I might need to have some sky assets that change the color of the sky. I might decide to have the water move as it's being slurped up or maybe get disturbed and splash at the surface when my character's drinking. So I might need assets for this. And I found this GIF animation. I just looked up um, dog drinking. And it's fairly high resolution, high enough for a GIF animation anyway. And it gives me lots of frames. This is the problem with taking film footage. <laughs> this is high speed. This is the problem with taking film footage and making GIF animations. Instead of it being like a, a nice 16 frames or something, it's 143 frames, right? Now, is my animation going to be this smooth and this detailed? No, because even if it is in the water, I'm not going to be able to match that with every leaf and every, you know, I'm not Pixel. Not for the three days or whatever we have to do this assignment. But I could actually use this tongue and that water splash in my animation. I can composite with a GIF animation the same way I composite with, with layers. Because really all these are is just sequential images. So that's an asset. You can even look up um, for look up animated assets and references by doing a Google image search. Let's see if I look for sunset, and then going to tools, and then going to type and saying animated files only. And though they won't be animated in their thumbnail, my son is kind of similar to well, let's see, similar to this it will show you the animation in the preview. So that's an animation of the water that's reflecting. I want the sun actually to be setting and to change the sky color. And you'll see a lot of these GIFs are just not great, but that starts to change the sky color. That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> so you, you can think about this, but basically we're gonna be learning how to animate. And so I can move the sun as long as I use the right assets and I can change all of that without needing to, to worry about this stuff. 
But if you're worried about making water move, you know, you can you can rely on some of this stuff. We can definitely composite from existing sources. That's way too slow. All right. And we're going to try to improve on some of these GIF animations that are out there. If you're introducing a new character, like this hand, or a new asset, you'll have to search and find that. Okay, the other important file is what's called the stage. And the stage is once we have a frame completely built out of assets, out of layers, it's basically a big composite, then we get, we're going to flatten that into one image and copy that over to our stage. And our stage becomes basically our film reel. Because all we can do to animate within Photoshop is to play one layer, and then another layer, and then another layer. And we don't want it to be play these 60 layers, and then turn all 60 of those off and play this ne these next 63 layers. That's just way too labor intensive. So we need to organize them on the stage. So another way to think of this is your assets are all your disorganized puzzle and props and um, set pieces, right? All your different puppet. So think of this as disorganized. And that Photoshop file is just going to be full of layers that we never delete. But our stage is going to be organized, lean and clean. And that's what we'll output our final animation from. OK, so before I even build a, a Photoshop file, I need to gather the assets. So this is where your file organization is helpful. I have all these different assignment folders. I know I want my creature from assignment 2. And I want my PNG, my high-res PNG creature. That can be used as a good puppet. I can pull that into assets if I need to. But what if I want to pull it out but not lose it in this folder? So this is how we can move something by duplicating it. If you hold down Option as you drag and drop, it will add a copy. And we have plenty of room on these computers. Don't overwrite an old file. right? Instead, make a duplicate of it, rename it, use it somewhere else. Another asset I definitely want is my Assignment 1 background. But instead of bringing in my whole PSD, I might just bring in the, the JPEG. So notice these are both orange. These are both online file types. These are what I put on the photo bucket, but they're still full resolution. But because my storyboard sketch shows my character in the setting already, I have an even better file <laughs> for my assets, which is my assignment 3 PSD. So I'll copy that into my assets disorganized file. And I think this is where I'll start to build my assets. Because this already has my creature in the setting with lighting and texture fills and shadows. Um, and so I'll start building assets onto this. So let's open that up. And really, actually, before I even open it, I should rename it. So I'm going to call it Carl Assignment 5 assets. And I think of this like a treasure chest, right? When Tim Burton goes into his studio to do a stop motion film, he has boxes and boxes full of little puppet heads with different expressions. He has boxes and boxes and crates of sets and of props and of different things he can use to, to make his scene. So this assets file is the big treasure chest of all these different things I might want to use. Even things I draw myself. Right? And how do I make them useful? I put them each on a different layer so that they can be moved, duplicated, and changed. OK, it's easiest to start at the beginning. And look at that. I've already got all the assets all placed for my first frame. but. My final animation is going to be a square, right? 
it's not going to be this kind of wide screen. And so the first asset I might create is what's called a viewing frame. So on top of everything, I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to use the rectangular marquee. And this is why we do squares, because it's the easiest thing to match. I just hold down shift, just like you did for perfect circles, and I'm going to make a square with the rectangular marquee that I think matches in some way what I thought of for the setting. Okay. Then I'm going to say select inverse. So it's actually all the space outside of that. And I'm going to fill it, edit fill with white. And I can even uh, name this layer. So this is going to be my zoomed in frame. What do I mean by that? So that is going to be when I zoom into my character here in the middle section to really showcase his expression and his transformation. This is the framing I'm going to use. So this is controlling a camera move. But for my first few, I realize, oh, I need to get more of the setting in there. I, I can't even see the sun in this. So my another frame I'm going to create Hold down shift. Let's make that square as big as possible and then let's move it over. And then let's select the inverse and fill it with white. This is my zoomed out frame. So I go from this to this. Okay. Now, what does that show me? It shows me that when I do the camera move, I'll need to build frames that kind of, however fast I want that camera to move, right? That move from being out from this view to being into this view. That's helpful to know. Okay, now let's just work on it's easy to start at the beginning. What assets do I need for this first set of motions? The action of drinking. Well, this is going to be character assets, right? So I need to go to see what I have. And mostly it's all on this smart layer that's referencing my PNG. Now, instead of changing this, I am going to duplicate it, right? So Command-J, duplicate, get a perfect copy. Because these are now my assets for animating, I'm going to label them with a color. And eventually, I'll kind of clean up and compress everything that, that doesn't need to change. But what do I do know needs to change for him? I know his head needs to change. He needs to be able to tilt at the neck. He needs to be able to drink. And in order to drink, I know that he's going to need to have his mouth open in some way, right? So I'm going to go ahead and rasterize that smart layer. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to start cutting out assets. So the first asset I want to cut out is his head and ears. And this shows you why building assets all the way to the neck can be tricky. It's like thinking of puppet construction. Okay, now I'll just duplicate that. So I have one asset that's just his head. And these are GIF animations. They're not going to be full resolution for printing. Right? They're going to be made for, for viewing on a screen. So I'm going to label this head, mouth closed. Eyes open. What's another asset I might want? His eye. 
Let's duplicate that. 